what is the gap between LEC as a league and the LPL or possibly Eastern world in general right now? <laughs> I, I think the gap has been much in light years if you look league to league. I think it's not comparable at all. Uh, I think if you take any team from LPL top 10, they probably walk into the semifinals LEC pretty easily. Um, I don't think that we're in a state yet where we can close to them, but at the same time, Hey guys, this is Ashley Kang of Horizon Esports, and I'm, this interview has been brought to you by Secret Lab. And I'm joined by Grabs, the head coach of G2 Esports, after they finished week three of 2021 LEC Summer Split. Um, Grabs, how are you doing? I mean, of course, after 0 2, you can't be too happy. Um, yeah. We kind of expected to have growing pains with the new edition of Nelson, but especially losing against Synonic Overserves, and the fashion that we lost was not satisfying, so we can't be happy. Um, yeah. So we really know what is going wrong, so we have something to work towards at least. Yeah, um, and many people were commenting on the drafts that G2 had showcased against Fnatic because it was quite surprising to see Jin and Pankion back into the meta again. It personally gave me a bit of a 2020 Wells flashback. Um, can you give me more background on why you decided to make that particular draft? Um, so basically, Jin is a champion that also benefits diving comes because his diving units can follow up very easily, whereas other of these can't. Um, Kaiser, for example, could have had a bad matchup against Kalista, so we didn't want to go that route. Mm -hmm. Also, Jin utilizes kind of the early game Kalista has, which was the main purpose. And as you could see in the game, we actually had more pressure and we were pushing, we could move. And Pantheon, um, that's the same thing, he wins lane. Um, he also facilitates the, the, the global ults with Pantheon, with uh, Nocturne together. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we couldn't use it in the game, right? Um, so the idea behind it was that we have a winning side and Diego, we should win against both Nocturne and Silas, and then with Pantheon and Nocturne to support him on side. We didn't get to that stage, so of course the, the picks were pushing a little bit. And speaking of the drafts, um, it is unfortunately true that G2 did go 0 2. And I also want to ask your reasoning for that match against Vitality because we were quite interested to see some picks like Hokama and Midlink Gwen. Well, basically, the idea was just that we um, get Gwen as one of the most broken channels right now and again. Mm -hmm. And we match the hyper comp. Like, the moment I pick Fresh, it's very clear that when I have Jinx or Theo on um, free, we knew that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pick the arms of um, Jinx Tom Kench. They get their fears, everything is fine. Like both teams kind of want to do the same thing. Um, Hyper carry comes, and then in 4 5 in the ban phase, we said if they ban one of Ludo Karma, we ban the other one. If not, we just match it. Because again, both teams want to do the same thing. Um, then um, I think the, the one mistake we did there was just the jungle pick, where it kind of got a bit more thinned out than we used to in scrims. And probably the, even though the fresh challenge would have been a better pick, or even Hacker. Just to have some for, some, um, something to see. Um, Olaf, though, was there to facilitate the tempo in the game because Olaf farms faster than Lee And we actually had tempo advantages where he goes top, he burns the flash of Lulu while Lee's farming. Um, but we just over four situations where Rise can join. And then again, we're playing again from behind where both comes kind of when it comes to the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just really fr frustrating to see because um, it's just legit both comes can't walk into each other. If they walk into us, when Jinx is ahead, they get um, Jinx rocketed from, from far with Kama Shields, they can't do anything the same way for us. We can't walk into them. Um, so then just falling behind made the game really hard. But in the draft, you can argue that with the priority with Rise, they should have been ahead, I think. Um, so I think that's a fair criticism. But um, just reading after the game, the Kama pick is bad or whatever, it's a bit, uh, a bit tilting. There have been some criticism that G2's latest drafts aren't up to date with the current meta trends. Would you agree or disagree with the statement? I would disagree. I mean, we see the same champs every game, basically, right? It's not like there's mm -hmm. much room for creativity. Um, the Tarek was a pick that happens in scrims sometimes. Um, probably in hands, I should have been out before the Pantheon get lane pressure, which we did. Um, we just tried to snowball it. And yesterday, the Rise is an answer to Gwen where it's still not really clear for most teams if Gwen or Rise wins. Like, Rise wins early game, of course, as a range champion, but I talked to, like, the Tati coach afterwards, and we were not, not quite sure who wins second afterwards. Like, Caps mm -hmm. has one thing, Midas has one thing. Um, so also the game depends on that one, because by our impression, if the game is even, Gwen should win. That means we always have priority on one side, and we can play from there. But by their impression, Rise is priority, and then they should have a winning draft. So I think the draft yesterday against Tati was, like, very close in terms of, like, nuances and to actually get to ahead. Um, but of course, then fans count uh, Fresh Hook and Rise of the Year's Hard to See, and by that logic, they, they won. Um, but I think um, 
maybe we should just do a better job of explaining to fans how the games interact, how champs interact, because I think that's just uh, um, a hole they have in the understanding of the game. And today, I mean, today was just different because yesterday we had the hammer comp and it didn't work out. So we went to something that in scrims at least looked really good. We just fight everything we can with Vigo Nocturne, we fly in. And I still think the game would be fine if we just don't take a fight. If like, we have Panther and Nocturne, we take a fight when they're already there. We have two troubles and we face check them, which um, in hindsight, of course, is a, a really big mistake. And probably if you play the game a bit smarter, then the Ronectum and the Salas can't catch Salas that easily. Or if they do, then the Metal gets off. So I think there was also some nuances there. But um, the game just got out of hand really quickly, unfortunately. Um, speaking of growing pains within G2, you know, as you mentioned, Nelson has recently joined G2. And Nelson, as well as some of the G2 players, have been quite vocal about Nelson bringing the Eastern way of seeing the game and trying to implement this within G2. Can you tell me more specifically, in your opinion, what is like the biggest difference between how the East sees League of Legends and how G2 has been currently perceiving the game? I, I will try to make it as vague as possible, just to make sure that other teams don't get the same information we got from Nelson. Oh, yeah, right? true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Appreciate basically, it. it's, it's, it's around just around timings, like certain timings in the game that we didn't think about really, where apparently in China especially, they count those timings and they move accordingly during those timings, which um, I think we try to implement. It works pretty well sometimes, but um, at the same time, it also backfires sometimes because uh, today, one time it did, I can't say really when because that will reveal the moment mm -hmm. that we actually use this new strat. Yeah. Um, but as I said before, it just, like we knew it's going to be hard in the beginning because now we don't play the way we did before. We try to learn something new. And mm -hmm. that just means we don't have the mental capacity to do the same thing we did before. Because, for example, the second back today, I think the OG2 would have just like pushed sides, be fine, and keep playing. Mm -hmm. Whereas now we try to like actually play on the break and take a fight, which we could have won if we just wait a bit, but lost 5 0. So, um, I mean, again, we are not shocked by this. Of course, it hurts to lose, mm -hmm. but we were really aware that we're not going to be 18 0 and um, be the best team instantly while learning new stuff. It does sound like a constant narrative that, hey, um, Delson is bringing new concept to the team and we are adjusting to it, but at the same time, um, but we will definitely get there. In your prediction, by when will we see G2 becoming aligned with Nelson's current feedbacks? Within um, the regular split, by hard. the playoffs? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to say because we actually felt pretty good after this week's scrims. Uh, um, but then again, I think, for example, the second comp we played in scrims, we get 20 kills by 10 minutes and then we feel good, right? And if a team wasn't into it or drafts around it, Suddenly we get the wrong lead. So I think in, in that way, like, um, we're a bit naive in how to draft, that um, answers are there for the way we drafted. And we're punished for it. So I think there's also, like, um, even though drafts were fine, we should have been winning these drafts, I think. So I'm not too happy about that. But um, it's hard to put a number on it. It's, it's, we're still trying to find the balance. Mm -hmm. And this could still take some weeks. Um, I think as a goal, we should have the goal to get the first two spots because um, they give you the, the best chance of going to worlds, right? We need to win one best of five. So that's something we have in our minds. But it could be that they're still not the best two we can be, even for playoffs, just because, again, we don't want to be an Nelson team and we don't want to be G2. We want to be a mix of it, right? We want to be a team that, because we were like the top four at Worlds three years in a row, so it can't be bad if we do that. But having new nuances, having a new way to play in the game and then combine those two is the goal. And that could take some more weeks. And I can't really say that when we're finished with the process. Out of curiosity, because I also remember Mickey saying at the beginning of the year that he has been referencing a lot more Eastern LPL as, as well as well teams. What are some specific teams that you have been referencing in your recent analysis? Uh, mostly LPL teams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, it's uh, fine. I'm not going to get offended. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think Korea right now is only dumb one. I huh. think, um, I mean, I'm saying we're playing bad as well, but I'm not saying we're better. Okay. But I'm just saying, if you look at the top world teams, I think that one is the only Korean team that has a chance. Yeah. I think their teams look pretty weak, honestly. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I didn't mean it that way. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. And people really feel so, bad when they say, oh, our PO looks better than LCK at the moment, but that's completely fine. I'm just an interviewer, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so right now, we're just looking at the top LPL teams, right? And it's just very interesting to see that they still have like, so, so different teams. FPX is just different than other teams, for example. Um, G is a different meta they had it on the side and other teams would have had. So there's lots to learn from there. Um, even though I would say like 
if you really go in depth, you also see many mistakes they also still do. So um, it's just hard to judge who to learn from. So basically, what we're doing is just to let me take references, like um, just pinpoint stuff that did well. Um, we know the teams are not perfect, but we can still learn from them, of course. Yeah. Different setups, different um, data science, for example. But I don't think there's one clear team where you like, just follow what they do. I can't hear you anymore. I maybe unplugged something. I'm not quite sure. Oh, well, I can, I can hear you. Could it be mine? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, Grace, um, thank you so much for this conversation. And this is my final question. While we were on the subject of especially the LPL teams, which I agree it looks like the strongest league in the world right now, what is the gap between LEC as a league and the LPL or possibly Eastern world in general right now? <laughs> I, I think the gap has been much in light years if you look league to league. I think it's not comparable at all. Uh, I think... If you take any team from LPL top 10, they probably walk into the semifinals LEC pretty easily. Um, I don't think that we're in a state yet where we can close to them. But at the same time, LEC fans have to understand that the system we have originally, the town system, is something they had used before. Like, and the numbers they have as well. Like the scouting runs are thousands of players mm -hmm. trying to break in. Um, so I think for what we have, and just looking at my lines and work, for example, is, is insane. Now we see VTO on Misfits having good performances. So like there is talent here that is hopefully in the future going to build up the base to make LSC better and more consistent. But um, it's very clear that there is a drop off. Um, even us right now, for example, we're not good. Um, Misfits is a top team, still are very vulnerable, I think. So it just shows that the league is not that great in, in the balance. Mm. But that's just something you have to deal with. I think um, it's unreasonable to expect that a league like LSC will be similar to LPL just because of the player numbers and also the structure they have there. Um, same was said for Korea for a long time, where I'm not quite sure how the gap is. I still think like if you just go table to table, I think Diamond was the best team. I think probably it, our still top in teams, the world or no, like, just compared to LCK, LCK in Europe. LCK, okay, uh, yeah. Like Diamond clearly the best. I think our top teams are probably a bit better than the rest of Korean top teams. Mm -hmm. Like if I take best of fives, I think. Like, I would be comfortable playing in GMG and um, SKT, even though the way we play today. So I think it's hard. To, like, LCK on average is better, but I think our top end is a bit stronger currently. Mm. Um, just compared to feeling with them, how we played. Could also be very biased because I think just GMG had a really poor performance against us in the, in the quarterfinals uh, last year. Was. So I could be a bit biased there, but they felt really lackluster. Like and I don't see that much improvements because, for example, based on the Kagula show, if Ula plays well, they win. If they don't, they don't. Um, <laughs> SKT is struggling. So it just started. I think it would be like a fist fight, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know who wins besides Damon being the best team. Fun fact. In Korea, we actually call it ruler ending. The way that most mm. Genji wins most games. Like, oh yeah, yeah, Genji does a bunch of stuff and the other team does other stuff. In the end, it's the ruler ending. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me, right? Uh, ruler is uh, incredibly good. So it makes sense on the play like this, but... Yeah, the rest of the team doesn't look too convincing sometimes. Thank you so much for this insight once again, and best of luck for the rest of the LEC. Hello, Horizon Esports' Ashley Kang. Horizon Esports라는 브랜드가 최근에 Secret Lab이라는 게이밍 채널 회사랑 스폰서를 협업하게 되었어요. 와, 여러분이 이때까지 제가 올리는 Horizon이 올리는 인터뷰를 재미있게 시청하고 계셨다면. 유튜브 설명란에 있는 아래 링크를 따라가셔서 시크릿랩에 어떤 물건이 있나 둘러보시기만 해도 좋을 것 같아요. 왜? 만약 구매를 하신다면 저 역시 마진도 떨어지고 좋고 저도 스폰서십을 통해서 앞으로도 지속해서 2021년 내내 더 많은 컨텐츠를 만들 수 있을 것 같으니까 코라이즌 e스포츠 그리고 시크릿랩 많은 사랑과 관심 가져주시면 정말 감사할 것 같습니다.